Hey guys, how's it going? This is Evening Devotion, and this one's going to be a shocker for several people. Because I've been telling you guys for a long time, and I discovered this just by reading the scriptures, and it, it just come to me that, that this is the case, that, that whenever we see Jesus, don't be surprised, don't be shocked when you see him, and he's covered in scars. The reason why Mary didn't recognize him when she had just seen him three days before was because he was covered in scars. His body was deformed because of the beating. Because even after a, such a horrible beating, when the body dies, the tissue still swells up. In a lot of cases, it can make the corpse look even more ghastly than what it was before. But with the beating Jesus received, it would be no surprise that he would look different. Nobody, after he was resurrected, recognized him. A lot of people say he, because he was glorified into a different form. No. I completely disagree with that. He would look exactly the same. So whatever he looked like on the cross, he would probably have looked a little bit worse after he came out of the grave. This evening's devotion is going to express that sentiment. I'm not sure who wrote this, I'm not sure where this comes from, but this person sees exactly what I see when I read these scriptures. And when John stood in heaven in the throne room and he looked and he saw the lamb as it if at it as if it had been slain. There was no little white lamb with its feet tied together and its throat cut walking across the floor of heaven. It was Christ, still bearing his scars and wounds. We know he did, because when he told Thomas, Thomas was looking at him in the face and didn't believe who he was. There's no way. I don't recognize you. Look. I've got the holes in my hands. Look, I've got the holes in my ribs. The one thing that separated Christ from everyone else who hung on the cross was the fact that his legs were broken. The Bible prophesied that his bone, not even one bone, would be broken. He had that hole in his ribs, and that was what set him apart from everyone else, because no one else ever was treated that way or received that wound on the cross. Common practice was break their legs so they would die quickly. Jesus was dead before they got there. So they poke him in the ribs to see what happened. Lo, in the midst of the throne stood a lamb as it had been slain. Revelation 5, 6. You guys know this one. I've gone over Revelation 5 a ton of times. We don't need to look at it. You can look at it on your own. Why should our exalted Lord appear in his wounds? In glory. And this is the question everybody asks. Why should he still have his scars? The wounds of Jesus are his glories, his jewels, his sacred ornaments. To the eye of the believer, Jesus is passing fair because he is white and ruddy. White with innocence and ruddy with his own blood. We see him as the lily of matchless purity and as the rose crimsoned with his own gore. Christ is lovely upon all of it in Tabor and by the sea, but oh, there was never, there never was such a matchless Christ as he that did hang upon the cross. There we beheld all his beauties in perfection, all his attributes developed, all his love drawn out, all his character expressed. Beloved, the wounds of Jesus are far more fair in our eyes than all the splendor and pomp of kings. The thorny crown is more than an imperial diadem. It is true that he bears not now the scepter of reed. But there was a glory in it that never flashed from scepter of gold. Jesus wears the appearance of a slain lamb as his court dress in which he wooed our souls and redeemed them by his complete atonement. Nor are these only the ornaments of Christ. They are the trophies of his love and of his victory. He has divided the spoil with the strong. He has redeemed for himself a great multitude whom no man can number, and these scars are the memorials of the fight. Ah, if Christ thus loves to retain the thought of his sufferings for his people, how precious should his wounds be to us. Clearly, there's a great deal of respect attached to wounds. We see that in 
pop culture. We see that in movies. Uh, we go back in of, the, of old, you know, old time warriors, old Native American warriors, old Norse and Viking warriors. Uh, uh, battle scars were a badge of honor. I've even seen this in the military. Hey, we can do plastic surgery to fix your scars. No, I'll take it. I'll just wear them. And it means something. It's a reminder. In every single movie I've ever seen it, it's a reminder. Go back and look at the, the one that What's-His-Name did with the blue people. The guy was attacked by some creature on that planet, and he had these big scars across his head and face. And he said, I, I, I decided to keep them because they remind me of what we're doing here. Remind me of what I'm fighting. Christ is no different in that these scars are a reminder to everybody who looks upon him. That they would remember what he did. That he is king. That he is Messiah. When I came to that realization that this is the case, that this is what he looks like whenever people see him, it makes so many other scriptures make so much more sense. My thought was, I hope that I can wear my internal scars on the outside to show What, a, what an amazing concept to consider, and most people don't know this. Uh, most of your theologians don't, can't even comprehend this, that, that our Lord would look less than appealing. But when you understand what all means, understand what all that beating was meant to accomplish, when you understand that, that this was something God took pleasure in, the Bible says this quite clearly, it pleasured God to put him through this. Because it was an ends to a mean. It was to create a desired result. It was to fulfill what had been started millennia ago. So yes, when you see Christ, don't be shocked at what you see. Don't be shocked if he doesn't look like the picture hanging on the wall. Don't be shocked if he doesn't look like the wooden man hanging on the cross we see everywhere. Christ is not on the cross anymore. Don't be shocked if he doesn't fit the picture that you think he should look like. Instead, when you see him, ask him, Lord, which scar is mine? Which scar did you take from me? Which scratch or gouge was for my sins? Behold, how every wound of his a precious balm distills which heals the scars that sin has made and cures all mortal ills. Those wounds are mouths that preach his grace, the ensigns of his love, the seals of our expected bliss in paradise above. I would have my Lord look no other way, because if he looked normal and everything was taken away, how would I be reminded, how would anyone in heaven be reminded of what he went through? These scars are a testament. These wounds, these battle scars on him are a testament. That he's the one that hung on the cross. He's the one that died and rose again. He's the one that sat next to the Father. He's the one that runs the show. Take those scars away. And nobody will remember him. Why do you think the people, when they see him coming in great power and glory, are terrified, the whole earth? Because they're going to see him with his scars and go, that's a man that can fight. And he fought for us. On a battlefield that no one else could walk on except him. For a purpose no one else could fulfill except him. In a mission no one else could accept except him. So when you see Christ... When you see him covered in scars, don't be shocked. Don't be surprised. Glorify him. Worship him. Praise him. And thank him. For enduring that and dying for you on the cross. Those scars have meaning. Those wounds have value. And though we can't see that value here, we can certainly see it when we get over there. It's a powerful thing to take the beating for another, to bear the wounds of another. 
to give your life for another. And Christ said, there is no greater love than that, that a man give his life for his friend. There is no greater love that someone would stand in the gap for another one. That they would take the beating everyone else deserved. If this world would take the time to stop and sit back and think, what am I doing to glorify him? Or is what I'm doing insulting him? Because if I don't remember what he went through on the cross for me, I'm not going to remember to honor him in everything I do. And so many people find their way back into the darkness because they don't remember. Because nobody tells them the truth or makes it personal for them. He was bruised and scarred from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. Every inch of his body receiving injury. When they laid his dead corpse in that tomb, they said there's no surprise that this body would look completely different. Talk to anybody or even look it up online to see some of the pictures of some of the horrible things that after somebody received massive injury and then died within hours, they look completely different. Well, our Christ is no different than us in, in, in that he had a human body that did the same thing. And so he absolutely looked different so that Mary, who was one of the closest people to him, did not recognize him. John, the one closest to him, looking upon him in the upper room, did not recognize him. John, of all people, should have recognized him. Nobody recognized him. Those closest to him did not recognize him. Why? He didn't look different. But then again, he did. He was still the same Jesus that was just hanging on the cross days before. He just bears his scars. And why would he only have the holes in his wrists and the hole in his ribs and not have the other scars? That makes no sense. Why would God make all the other scars go away but those stay there? Now, he bears his wounds. They are visible for all to see. And that is a reminder. So when anybody looks on him, conviction comes. When anybody sees these things, they're reminded of what he did. And very soon the whole world is going to get that. Very soon the whole world is going to see him as he is. Very soon we all are. I pray this touches you very deeply in the heart. I pray you take the time to think about this. Some of the things, I, I was perusing a couple of channels that I haven't watched in a long time. People that used to be right on track with their uh, theology and they're, they're, they're all setting dates. And they've been wrong. I was going through looking wrong, wrong, wrong and they're just, they just go a couple of days ahead and pick another date. And how... That's almost the worst way we can insult our Lord is by thinking we can figure something out that he told us we can't. See, when he said that we can't, I believe him. And no matter how hard I try, I'm not going to discover it. No one else is either. I fear these people may be distracted so much that they're so focused on trying to figure something out they can't figure out that they may not be watching for him in the very act of them thinking that they're watching for him. Instead, let us honor our Lord and the wounds he received for us by believing his word and glorifying him. Instead of trying to come up with another day and keep leading people along and doing it for donations, oh, that's the horrible heresy. Let us give people the truth and the gospel. Let us tell them what they need to hear instead of what they want. Channels like mine don't do very well because I don't tell people what they want to hear. I tell them what the Word says, what they need to hear. Channels like that. Channels like so many. They do very well because they lie to people. They make a lot of money because they lie to people. I've talked to some of the individuals personally that had given $1,000 to some of these channels. 
I gave them $1,000. I can't believe I wasted my money on that. I can't believe you did that either. Why would you give that to somebody on YouTube? That's ridiculous. They don't need your money. The poor need your money. The people out there in the street suffering need your money. Obviously, if we're on YouTube uploading videos, we're not poor. We can afford the computer and the cell phone. It's people on the street that needs help. But we get our ears tickled and we get our, our, our feelings elated. And that just seems to be the magic key that opens everybody's pocketbook. If Christ died on the cross for us and rose again, and he still bears those scars, scars that he took for us, how should we be honoring him in this life? It is certainly not by disobeying his word. It's certainly not by walking on a path that he didn't tell us to walk on. It's certainly not by ignoring what his word says instead of doing what his word says. And all these people, day in and day out, wasting so much energy. trying to accomplish something they're never going to accomplish. They're like the kids trying to peek in the window to see what's in the old deserted house. Just piling up boards and bricks, jumping up and down. Problem is, there's not even a window there to look through. And they keep beating their head against the wall, against the wall but it's to no avail. Instead, just read the word. Believe what the word says. Obey the word. Christ went through all that for us that's the least we could do not insulting him by denying his word and doing the opposite of what it says trying to play to the crowd trying to placate those who think that we should do what they want us to do on our channels this is my channel I run this channel my way the way the Lord leads me to run it I'm not going to cater to anyone I'm not going to change what I do for anyone I'm not going to buy into the lies, into the deceit, because someone thinks I should. Or because they cost, they make more and more accounts on YouTube. How they keep up with that, I have no idea. I struggle to keep up with one account. Making account after account just to comment on my video, to try to put some kind of doubt in there. Thinking that they're accomplishing something, but all they're doing is wasting their time and heaping coals of fire on their own head. And yet, these words pass right by them, and they keep doing it. The warnings go in one ear and out the other, and it never registers. Always learning, never coming to a knowledge of the truth. That's them. And the Lord, and if you read Revelation chapter 2 and 3, he says very clearly, what will happen to those particular churches that are doing those things? It all applies to us now. I shared something over on the uh, community tab about that. And some of those churches are still going to be here. If they don't change. If those people don't change. Our Lord did this for a reason. Let us not insult him by acting the way we're acting, conducting ourselves in a way that we're conducting ourselves and taking the name of the Lord in vain by claiming we're something we're not. These morning and evening devotions are very powerful and I am see every day that I do these more and more now why the Lord led me here. And I'm going to keep doing them because they tell us a story, a very important story that everyone would do well to heed. Let us glorify our God. Let us show his grace in us and let us live the life he's given us and look on and look up for our scarred and beaten Lord because that's his glory I love you guys I bless you all in Jesus name I'll see you in the next video